Welcome to ITU Telecom World 2019 here from the Ghana stand at uh, Budapest in Hungary uh, where I've got the great pleasure of being joined by the Minister for Communications, Esla Owusu Ekufu, and I wanted to uh, say well thank you for, for letting us uh, step onto your stand and have a little chat with you. It's a great pleasure to have you here. I'm more used to having the interview in the media center so for me it's a first. And this is Ghana Day at the, at the ITU Telecom World in Budapest, so you're most welcome to our stand. Thank you very much. As, as, as uh, the Minister quite rightly said, it is Ghana Day here and we've just had a, a lot of celebrations here and a lot of uh, uh, speeches. Um, it's, uh, it's cleared out a little bit here, thank goodness, uh, so that we've got a little bit of a quiet here just to, uh, for me to be able to answer, uh, get uh, the Minister to answer a few questions. So, Innovating Together, Connectivity That Matters is uh, this event's theme. What, in your opinion, makes connectivity meaningful and, and why is it important? The digital economy that we all want to develop can only be built on robust infrastructure and it demands uh, connectivity. And the nature of it is that you can't be connected in your own country and think that's okay. We need to build linkages with other countries, the continent and the world. And there's no better way to do it. Roads, rails, yes. But broadband fiber infrastructure is the easiest, quickest way to go. The Continental Free Trade Area has been launched on the continent. It's headquartered in Ghana. For it to work, we need to promote e-commerce. E-commerce can only work with robust connectivity. And we need to innovate together. Um, I keep saying that Africa will produce the workers of the century for the rest of the world. We need to give our young people the digital skills that they need. We have the most useful population on the continent, whereas other continents are aging. We are the most useful continent. If we give them the skills they need, they can sit on the continent and work with the uh, digital infrastructure we put in place and work anywhere in the world. We're promoting outsourcing and, and other things, which reduce the cost of providing the services that we're, we're, we're giving for the companies and are providing jobs in other parts of the world for young people who have the skills. It's critical that we see ourselves as sinking or swimming together. And for me, if the African continent works and digitization provides us with the best opportunity to do that, if we can get it right, put in the digital infrastructure that we need, give our people the digital skills, build on, on top of it the services, digital services, um, all the online and e e electronic services that we need, we've solved half the problems of the world. So innovating together and connectivity are critical for everything that we hope to achieve. Now, we've just been talking to some SMEs on the, the uh, ITU Smart uh, ABC stand, ITU T Smart ABC stand. I wanted to ask you, uh, what's the role of tech, tech startups and SMEs in Ghana and uh, how can government best support them? We have a lot of talent on the continent and we need to unearth it and equip them to deliver. And we're doing that to a large extent in Ghana. Many of the startups, the initiatives that we showcase today started life as startups. And I think that governments can use their purchasing power to buy the software and applications that our startups produce which are geared towards solving challenges, everyday challenges around us, and give them a hand up. We are doing that. Our EID project is being done by a Ghanaian company. Our digital property address system is by a Ghanaian company. We're working with Talamos, which is a Ghanaian company in health. We have startups in agriculture, the environment, you name it, we have it. But it is no use being just a startup. We have to invest in the intellectual property that they have developed, utilize it, showcase it, and promote its use in the country and in other parts of the continent and the world. That's how the Googles and the Facebooks started as startups. 
in people's garages and today they're global conglomerates. We can also build our African global conglomerates if we give them a leg up. And I think we're showcasing it, we're, we're, we're showing the way in Ghana with government itself procuring the services of Ghanaian companies, IT companies. And, and by the end of this year, we're working with a consortium of three fintechs to develop an electronic payments platform for payment for all goods and services by government agencies. And so instead of paying cash for services produced by departments and agencies of government, all public services delivered will be paid for electronically on a platform developed by Ghanaian companies working with the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Communications. And they get a percentage of whatever um, uh, monies uh, are collected from that platform. So it's a win-win-win situation. And once it works, we showcase it to other companies, uh, countries, and it's the beginning of establishing a global conglomerate. Born now, in Ghana. now, I wanted to ask you, as a first former uh, female uh, CEO of uh, a, a telecom company in Ghana, what can be done to bring more women into tech and close the digital gender gap? And, uh, and how important, in your opinion, is it to do so? It is critical. And we need to start by providing our young girls with digital skills. So we have uh, girls in coding clubs set up in the junior high schools. We even need to drill down lower and grab them in the kindergartens and get them excited about all things technology. We need female tech uh, uh, entrepreneurs to be mentors for them so that they see that there is a life, a uh, very useful life that they can get in technology. We need to promote science, technology, education and mathematics and innovation, STEM um, education in the schools and we're doing that. We, as part of our girls in, in ICT Day celebration, and we're not just having a day, we're having a week, twice a year, in different parts of the country. We've institutionalized a mentorship day, and we've brought uh, female CEOs of technology companies, including the large ones. Uh, Vodafone is headed by a woman in Ghana. Etel Tigo is headed by a woman in Ghana. So we bring them to talk to the women and excite them about that. In addition to that, we have an open day. We bring young girls from around the country. We brought 60 young girls from age 13 to 16 to Accra to spend a day with the various tech companies, um, ICT companies, and, and working well, shadowing the female in technology there and the exposing them to their challenges they have, the excitement they have, and they see them in the workplace. And for us, that's going to generate lifelong interest in a career in ICT for the young girls. And I'm excited about that and it's something that I would want others to emulate because from the feedback we have got, it's the most momentous event that has happened in their lives. They have not just been taught uh, basic uh, computer literacy and coding skills. They have seen women working with those skills in the workplace. They have seen the joy that they produce, they, they are getting from the workplace. They've seen how they're contributing to the growth of various sectors in, 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 in the IT world and they want to be part of it. That is how we can excite them and generate a lifelong interest in technology in, the, in our young girls and make sure that we will hand over to a, a, a generation of tech equipped, tech enabled uh, uh, young girls who would also take the baton and move with it. Okay, wonderful. And just finally, what's the value for you of uh, cross sectoral collaboration uh, and, and, and attending events such as ITU Telecom World? It is critical for us. And that is why you always see Ghana at Telecom World. We learn new things that are being done in other countries. We share our experiences with um, our, our colleagues. We meet uh, companies who have innovative products to sell. We, we meet uh, the leaders in the field who share the cutting edge experiences with us. We see, we, 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 we see the innovations that are being rolled out. Um, 
concepts that are yet to see life, but we were introduced to it very early on in the developmental stages of these uh, critical IT concepts. We discuss uh, emerging issues, we look at the challenges, proper solutions. Telecom's world is, has helped us develop many of the critical innovations that we're working on in the country. And we, we think that based on the interactions that we've had with colleagues here, others are also learning from our experiences. Our companies through Telecom World have got serious engagements and contracts with other countries. And so um, for us, we'll continue, it will continue to be a part of our statutory uh, calendar and, and meetings that we need to attend every year. And every year we come with a new crop of startups which get uh, a new lease of life through the engagements that they have at events such as this. So we thank the ITU for providing us with this opportunity to engage and to innovate together. That's wonderful. Well, thanks for letting us be together here on the, the uh, pavilion here at uh, on Ghana Day as well, and uh, th taking the time to to uh, share some value, very, very valuable insights with us. And uh, we look forward to catching up with you again uh, at the next uh, Telecom World. Absolutely, you should try some of our uh, Ghanaian sweets that we brought. We brought toasted coconut flakes. We brought our proverbial chocolates, and uh, we brought peanut brittle. We call it in Kati cake as well. We've shared. Uh, shea butter for the skin. We've given everybody our kente sash, which is a sign of our colorful uh, hospitality as well. And um, welcome to Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much indeed. Thank you and thank you.